أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته to all our lovely viewers watching Hidayat TV and welcome to Youth Matters with me your host Sakina Mushtaq Habib first and foremost I would like to congratulate you all on the auspicious wiladat of our eighth Imam Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam. Uh, one of the extraordinary specialities of Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam is that uh, Hadith al Silsilat al Zahab, Hadith of the Golden Chain, is a hadith which is narrated especially by Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam. This uh, hadith is a chain and it is a reference to the continuity of spiritual authority which is passed from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam through each of the Imams up to the eighth Imam, Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam. So when he narrates this hadith, he mentions all of the names of his great grandfathers, uh, making it uh, a point and a reference that how important uh, is the, le uh, the lineage of the progeny of uh, the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Also, uh, the way uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was made for Bibi Khadija alayhi salam the way Imam Ali alayhi salam was made for Bibi Fatima salam Allahi alayha, and the way Imam Hussein alayhi salam was made for Bibi Zainab salam Allahi alayha. The same way Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam uh, was made as a partner uh, for Bibi Ma'asumai Qum salam Allahi alayha. And for those who don't know, another interesting fact about Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam is that although he is buried in Mashhad, Iran, amongst the Iranians, his mother was actually Bibi Ummul Banin Najma Khatun and she was originally from North Africa and in some traditions they say that she was a princess of Abyssinia in those days Ethiopia now was known as Abyssinia so from this we know and even some traditions and riwayas mention that Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam therefore did not have a very fair complexion. As you know, most of the people might have imagined him or thought so. Despite that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with so many uh, gifts, including that of having the ability of speaking with animals in their language, the way we see in the story of Zamine Ahu, the deer. And apart from that, Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam knew several other languages of the world and that of which we do not know. Subhanallah. Such was the wisdom of Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam. And he is the only Imam from the progeny of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam who is buried in the farthest land from his family in a very foreign country which is out of the Middle East. And today that place is known as Mashhad in Iran. And this for this place like the lovers of Imam Ali Rada alayhi salam would willingly want to travel halfway across the world just to visit his holy shrine and be able to receive his abundant blessings and miracles. SubhanAllah, such is the beautiful status of our eighth Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Today on our episode, we have with us uh, a 21 year old uh, guest who is joining us from Northampton, UK. He is a young Noha Khan who just freshly started his way into uh, reciting and he released his first official album uh, during Muharram uh, last year. So, without much further ado, I would like to welcome my honorable guest. Sayyid Babur Abbas Jafri on today's program. Assalamu alaikum, Babur. How are you? And welcome to Youth Matters. Wa alaikum assalam, Sister Sakina. Alhamdulillah. 
Um, very well, thank you very much. I would like to thank you uh, for inviting me to join you in the Youth Matters program today. Uh, it truly is a great and a unique initiative uh, that I'm very proud to be able to take part in. I was watching the show recently uh, and my uh, dear brother and friend uh, Yusuf Ali Akira was on the show. Uh, and So I was pleasantly surprised by some of the uh, great questions that you were asking him. Uh, so I look forward to taking part in the show today, inshallah. Thank you. It is actually really an absolute honor and a pleasure having you join here. And uh, inshallah, inshallah, we'll be getting to know you a lot more and we'll be having a, a fun session, inshallah. So for the viewers uh, who do not know, know Ba a lot, I would like to mention that he is a very uh, well-known reciter and he has gained a lot of popularity to begin with. So some of his uh, very famous recitations include the latest uh, Mawla Hussain's new Manqabat, which was released uh, this Shaban uh, in the year 2021. And you can all go on YouTube and check it out. And um, one of my favorites is Imam Ali's uh, Ali Kehnese, which was uh, released on the 13th of Rajab. Uh, uh, of this year and it has just amazing and beautiful words and the way he has recited is is really just amazing mashallah so uh, Babur I'm so excited uh, to have you here with me now first of all I want you to introduce yourself to everybody here so uh, tell us about yourself yeah sure uh, so for those of um, the viewers who don't know who I am uh, my name is Sayyid Babur Abbas Jafri and I'm 21 years old and I'm from Northampton. I'm a third year accounting and finance student at the University of Leicester and as part of my hobby I often recite religious kalams, religious eulogies uh, in the honour of Prophet Muhammad and his holy household. So I began reciting locally in the Northampton Imam Barga um, which uh, recently uh, elders, you know, formed the Imam Barga in 2011, and so I've been reciting for for a while before that. But ever since our elders managed to come together and, you know, um, establish an Imam Barga in Northampton, I've been able to have the opportunity and the platform to recite on a regular basis. And so, as I've grown older and developed as a reciter, um, I've been fortunate to recite on multiple occasions and at different venues across the UK. Uh, one of my achievements, uh, thanks to the blessings of the Ayla Bayt al uh, Sister Sakina recently mentioned, was is that I uh, managed to release my first Noha album during Muharram last year with the title Kalam Muharram Tohoga. And inshallah this year I look forward to releasing the second album for Muharram with the title Kalam that I haven't actually told anyone yet. So I'm going to, for the first time, I'll be telling you guys that the title Kalam for this uh, upcoming album will be Vada Hai Azada Roka. And so it's a kalam written by um, established um, poet and composer Janab Zishan Abdi. I'm sure some of you guys may have heard of him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. And so he's written and composed this kalam which um, will be coming out in Muharram inshallah. So I look forward to sharing that with you guys. Inshallah. What a pleasure. That's awesome to hear. And thank you for sharing with us the name of your upcoming album. We were really excited to know about it. So now that all, our, all of our viewers know about this, uh, inshallah, we are very excitedly and eagerly waiting to uh, hear and listen it, inshallah, listen okay. to it. So, um, Babur, can I know uh, where did that inspiration come from for you uh, into becoming a reciter? Uh, the inspiration for me came from two places. First and foremost, my family, because um, before we had our Imam Barga, we used to uh, rent out a local community centre in Northampton uh, for Muharram, for the 11-12 days in Muharram, we used to rent out a community centre and we used to do majalis of Mawla Imam Hussain al -Islam over there. But before um, we used to go to the community centre to take part in the majlis, we used to have a small ladies majlis um, at okay. my football's house. Um, and so obviously when I was a little child, I've been taking part in the, the ladies majlis where literally oh, everyone nice was nice. reciting and so it was such an Actually. inclusive environment that since all everyone was reciting I also started participating and reciting uh, along with the ladies of the family as well and so from there I got the inspiration to start reciting and then um, I started to carry that through into the 
uh, majalis that we used to have in our community center and then forward into our imam barga and then the, obviously the, uh, aside from the family aspect there was also many great reciters well-known reciters world famous reciters such as uh, nadim sarva mir sami farhani varis i used to listen to all of these great reciters and they were also um, a great inspiration for me uh, coming into recitation wow that's wonderful to know really what an exciting uh, story and uh, you know a nice background basically um do you have a favorite uh, reciter if i were to ask you oh you've put me on the spot here i i i, I really <laughs> love all of the reciters uh, but in particular one that i've really grown fond of growing up and one who's really inspired me would be definitely mir hasan mir uh, i've really um, learned a lot from listening to the way he recites uh, and it's been a great pleasure to you know every time he recites uh, it's really a great experience to listen and the way he connects with the audience and his voice and the way he has control over his voice and all the different yeah. aspects that make him the great reciter that he is has definitely inspired me i agree with you on that i i love mir hasan mir uh, as well his voice is really just so soulful and um the way he controls his vocals is just uh, amazing uh it's very true i agree um what about uh, if we talk about your family the way you said that uh, you attended a lot of uh, ladies majalis uh, mashallah so uh, you, maybe in your family like from your uh, maternal side uh, your mother or uh, your aunties probably do are they reciters as well do you get that from them uh yes um my cousins in particular they're all reciters as well um and my uh, my pupo she was the one who used to organize who still organizes the majalis and then also my yeah. grandmother her grandmother used to be a zakira as well and so i feel okay. like it's it's really driven down through generations the you know the the interest in recitation alhamdulillah that's very good to know alhamdulillah okay uh, before we continue uh, further um i would like uh, to mention to everybody that of course uh, babar has a very beautiful and a melodious voice and um for those of you who have not heard his voice uh, yet this is the chance right now for us to listen to him officially with us and since we are celebrating the wiladat of imam ali rada alayhi salam Uh, it would be really uh, a pleasure to have you babar recite a few uh, lines verses uh, qasida in the praise of imam ali rada alayhi salam if you may allow so let's get you started the floor is yours thank you um, i would like to recite a short and very beautiful munkabat in the honor of imam ali rada alayhi salam it's it's a munajat i'm sure you guys Uh, will have heard it but it's one that's very close to my heart in fact i believe it's probably the first kalam in the honor of imam raza alayhi salam that i ever recited uh, so i would like to present that to you now uh, if we just go ahead and recite one loud salawat allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajjil faraj har nafas har ghadi mere dil se yahi आर ही है सदा या रजा या रजा या रजा और तेरी अजमत पे भला तू न दलालत बनता तेरी अजमत पे भला तू न दलालत बनता शेर कालीन का किस तरह न जिंदा होता अरे है हकीकत यही तेरी मर्जी में ही है खुदा की रजा या में रजा या मा में रजा या मा में रजा और गैर किन को यू होते हुए देखा मुमकिन 
غیر کن کو یوں ہوتے ہوئے دیکھا ممکن جاگتی آنکھوں سے جنت میں گزارے ارے اس کو کیا ہو یقین اس کو کیا ہو یقین جس نے دیکھا نہیں کبھی روزہ تیرا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا رب کیسا یہ میرے ذہن میں آیا ہے ابھی رب کیسا یہ میرے ذہن میں آیا ہے ابھی جیسے گہوار نے فطر اس کو شفا بانٹی تھی ارے ویسے ہی روز و شب ویسے ہی روز و شب بانٹتا ہے شفا تیرا شہن شفا یا امام رضا 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 مولا شیر کے سبکے میں تمام مومنین و مومنات کو جلد خراسان کی زیارت نصیب عطا فرمائے الہی آمین رب کے مشہد سے جو پلتا ہوں تو میرے محسن اب کے مشہد سے جو پلتا ہوں تو میرے محسن سانس لینا مجھے اچھا نہیں لگتا لیکن سانس لینا مجھے اچھا نہیں لگتا لیکن ارے پھر بھی ہے یہ سکون پھر بھی ہے یہ سکون میں کہیں بھی رہوں دل وہی ہے میرا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا سکینہ آپ بطور خاص آپ کی نظر کر رہا ہوں دیکھئے گا شہر پوچھنے حال لکی رہن جب آئے میرا پوچھنے حال لکی رہن جب آئے میرا میں نے دہر آیا جواب جو کسیدہ تیرا میں نے دہر آیا جواب جو کسیدہ تیرا وجد میں آکے پھر وہ بھی کہنے لگے میں بھی کہنے لگا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا اور میری اس وقت تیرے در پہ نظر ہے مولا میری اس وقت تیرے در پہ نظر ہے مولا اور تجھے میری مسئیبت کی خبر ہے مولا اور تجھے سب کی مسئیبت کی خبر ہے مولا دور افتاد کر میری امداد کر تو ہے مشکل کشا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا یا امام رضا رفی شہر دیکھے گا التجاب سے کرتا ہوں امام حشتم ان کے صدقے میں جنہیں کہتے ہیں معصوم آئے تو جو پریشان ہے جو پریشان ہے جلد کر دیجئے ان کی حاجت روا یا امام یا امام رضا 
Jazakallah, Jazakallah. That was honestly so beautiful. Thank you so much, Babar. You really filled today's program with so much of liveliness, so much of Ronak, so much of Josh, and you Thank actually you. made us feel as if we were there in Iraq now in Mashhad in front of the Zari of Imam Radha Thank you so much. And uh, we pray that all our viewers can one day uh, get that opportunity and all of us as well, including myself and you Allah to Allah be Allah. able to Allah visit Allah. the Holy Shrine of Imam Ali Radha, inshallah, and his sister Bima Sumayakum. It's really a heaven, that place when you go, it gives you that beautiful spiritual vibe and the, the 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 it it makes you feel like you know you're literally in paradise every step every Indeed. yeah everything about it is just so beautiful you can't even explain it in words inshallah Precisely. may allah bless us yes um yeah. moving on um today's topic is about um the usage of social media so i'm going to be asking you uh, a couple of questions on that and then we'll be having some short engaging questions um first of all what is your take on the usage of social media um especially right now you know we are using instagram a lot and um it really helps you to connect with the audience uh on a larger mm -hmm. scale right so what is your take on that uh personally i think it's a great and widely accessible platform for people to be heard and for sharing content. I think it's a brilliant way of connecting people, you know, from all over the world. I could be sitting in the UK and I could share something, I could share a message of the Ahlul Bayt with someone who's in Pakistan or with someone with who's someone who's in Africa for example. So it's a great way of connecting people from all over the world and from different walks of life even f for connecting people who aren't familiar with our Ayamah alayhi salam so for instance there could be Christian communities and Sikh communities who we could share the message of the Ayla Bayt alayhi salam with and I think that's very it's very much a very good strength of social media that it allows us to share the message of the Ayla Bayt alayhi salam with every single person who has access to social media Yes, very well said. It really has that uh, power. It is uh, a tool that, um, you know, sort of connects us uh, with people from different platforms, uh, from different walks yeah. of life. Now, um, which one which one does it best for you uh, personally? There are so many, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, um, and I don't know if I'm missing out on, on any other, but which one does it the best for you uh, out of these? That's right. There's so many now as you can't even count all of them. Personally, uh, I'm not great with Facebook. I'll be honest. I let my my father manage um, what goes on my Facebook and what goes up on there because yeah, that I one haven't... has actually become for the oldies now. <laughs> the Facebook yeah. that was once upon yeah. a time something. <laughs> exactly. I didn't even get yeah. a Facebook account until I was maybe 17, 18 years old. And my current Perfect. Facebook account was the one that my father made. So I let him manage Facebook because this, it feels to me like there's so much going on there uh, that I can't quite get my head around it, which is quite strange. Uh, but Twitter, uh, I rarely use Twitter, although I think it's a great platform and definitely one that I would like to use in the future. Instagram is where I'm yeah. at most often. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the first yeah. social form of social media that I ever used and so it's uh -huh. where I'm at most often um, and I started using it from before Facebook as well. Uh, Snapchat I don't use anymore yeah. because um, I feel like Snap the only thing that was unique about Snapchat was the stories and that kind of Instagram yes. kind of stole that feature and so then what do you have left on Snapchat? Just messages. And I feel like WhatsApp is better at messaging so uh, Snapchat does do stuff but I feel like it does it worse than all the other social media so I don't really use it anymore. <laughs> uh, and then WhatsApp is another great way of communicating and it's probably the one which I use yeah. most frequently after Instagram. 
Uh, so yeah, that's WhatsApp and Instagram are my two main ones. Although to be honest, I try to stay away from social media as much as possible because although it is a great way of sharing content and learning new things and staying up to date with what's going on in the world, it can also be quite addictive and you can yeah. end up going down rabbit holes and mm -hmm. before you know it you spend too much time on social media so I like to keep a good balance between you know consuming stuff on social media and actually producing stuff for social media as well. Um, I think you really put it out so well because um, Instagram really allows you to share uh, professional content like for example you can have your own professional account your own page and you know you can put up uh, those uh, things on Instagram for people to know about your upcoming events for example um, or, or a talk or uh, you know your uh, latest uh, recitations your 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 new album um, as far as um, snapchat uh, if you talk about snapchat even I don't understand that app <laughs> I think it it is for a certain category um, I know mm -hmm. some teenagers uh, maybe who are like uh, you can say from 12 to 15 or 16 year olds um, mm -hmm. I would put it in that age category they're the ones who are really uh, addicted to it and I don't know I personally really find it sometimes ridiculous like putting stories of everything literally what I'm eating yes. and um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're driving somewhere and you know yeah. <laughs> with those weird filters um, it, yeah. it kind of becomes funny at times, but I just yeah. love seeing how uh, they actually connect with it so well. Like literally, if you see a gathering of uh, such teenagers, they, they, they understand that language so well. And um, it yeah. amazes me, you know, <laughs> sometimes I feel like the left out one that I don't know, is it because of age or, or, or what? Uh, I don't yeah. know. I never uh, found Snapchat uh, like very useful in that manner. I would say um, <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, as you said, uh, your father <laughs> uses it. Uh, I think now yeah. Facebook has become very old, and uh, it yeah. belongs to the, that ca that category of the audience. Um, it's yeah, very easy for them to use. Yeah, and and it's become old now for um, uh, people of our age, and uh, you know. Um, uh, people who are now more into Instagram. I feel Instagram right now uh, yeah. is really uh, the best thing that is working out well uh, in terms Definitely. of professionalism, in terms of businesses, you know, even uh, if you want to promote a business or market uh, a business, yeah. I think Instagram really plays a very good role uh, in that 100%. way. Yeah. 100 percent i'll tell okay. you one quickly before quickly we feel before we move yeah. on one we forgot was TikTok. that's a new one which oh, yeah. i honestly <laughs> find i just find it ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> i was going to mention that and then for a moment i just thought that i don't know if it's even legal <laughs> you know in a way is it like even halal to say it because exactly. it doesn't have a lot of islamic content if we see it mm -hmm. um uh, if we like see the percentage, uh, it has very less Islamic content and it has a lot yeah. of rubbish content the way you said. 100%, but um, yeah. <laughs> there, is, there, there, are, there are some things that are very entertaining about it. And I think in this pandemic, <laughs> TikTok was the remedy for everybody to be yeah. entertained in their houses. <laughs> seeing other people's life stories and i i can't believe sometimes people have that time to actually make a TikTok like, exactly on a regular on a regular basis you know they actually have that energy and to to do it yeah. you know it, it actually amazes me like even parents who have children they actually have the time to make TikToks, and <laughs> yeah that's just beyond belief you know like we have such a busy schedule you, they still manage to yeah so yeah, TikTok yeah. right now is one of the the leading apps uh, in this okay. pandemic and in this century yeah. right now. It, it is really, uh, it has really like consumed uh, people's minds, and uh, yeah. many people are actually getting on that bandwagon of you know like uh, looking at it and uh, somehow just passing their time. Yeah. They just sort of enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, that was interesting. I guess we had a fun conversation. So now, yeah. um, Barbara, just uh, a couple of questions for you. And uh, let's see how well you do. Yeah. So I want yeah. to know from you, um, how many languages do you speak? 
Um, it's just English and Urdu and a bit of Punjabi. I don't know if I can claim that I speak Punjabi. I understand it sort oh, of. Oh, that's fine. But that's pretty much okay. it, yeah. I don't really speak it as that's well. Nice. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Okay, that's nice. What kind of a background do you come from? Like uh, your nationality, uh, some origins? Uh, my parents are originally from Pakistan, from uh, Karachi. So yeah, that's where my okay. parents are from. Yeah. Okay, that's where the Urdu and the Punjabi is coming in, right? Okay. Yes. Um, now, um, if you were to choose your heroes, uh, who would they be? Um, let's say one hero. If you were to choose one hero, who would he be and what qualities would you admire about them? You know, I actually like that question a lot because I, I saw someone answer that question recently. Oh, I saw a post um, related to that sort of question recently where people were, particularly the young generation, were looking at superheroes such as Iron Man or Superman and, you know, all of these yeah. comic um, superheroes. And then someone yeah. compared it to, well, what if they understood what our Ayman were like? For instance, Imam Ali, yeah. alayhi salam, and all of, you know, our Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. So I prefer to think of heroes as our I mind what they taught us for example for example they taught us patience and bravery and those sort of virtues rather than you know what the modern generation would probably think of as superheroes I feel like yeah. we should maybe think of our superheroes as our I must that's a very nice answer I really uh, liked the way you put it out and you thought of it it's amazing. Now tell me this, um, uh, yesterday was uh, Father's Day and the whole world was celebrating it, <laughs> you know. Now, uh, can you share with us a memory that you made with your father or you have a very special one and you would like to share with us? Um, there's quite a few to be honest. Um, I feel like the greatest thing, uh, the greatest memory would be so far is that the encouragement and the support that I always receive from my father when it comes to reciting. He's always encouraging me to recite and he's always providing me with, you know, feedback and he's taking me to places to recite since a young age. And I feel like that's been a huge factor in who I am today and where I'm at today. So I couldn't be where I am at right now if it wasn't for my father. Perfect. <laughs> May God bless him and inshallah mm -hmm. may uh, he encourage you more in your life to become more successful and um, mm -hmm. may you succeed inshallah. Okay, you, um, mm -hmm. we will be having uh, another question and that is, um, do you have a bucket list? And if you did, what is that one thing that you would want to do uh, on that list? I don't actually have a bucket list, you know, but if I was to have one, what what exactly is a bucket list? It's sort of like just things that you <laughs> want to do in life, isn't it? Yeah, things that you plan, like, okay, I want to pr probably like travel, like for me right now, I actually want to go to hotels and take yeah. a vacation <laughs> and a yeah. break, you know, like literally those seven star hotels, that's yeah. something on my bucket list. So I want to travel <laughs> around the world right now so badly. <laughs> yeah. 100% so same here. I feel prefer? like, yeah, I feel like once Corona is over, uh, hopefully soon, inshallah, then, you know, traveling right. is definitely on top of the bucket list, you know, seeing yeah. different uh, places around the world. There's really beautiful natural sites as well, as well as man-made sites. I'm, I'm more towards the natural site. That's why I prefer leaning towards. But then I also want to see okay. like, guys, I like, I love seeing skyscrapers as well, even though it, me it makes me feel uh, a bit claustrophobic at times but it's nice to yeah. see it as a tourist once in once in a while yeah that's nice okay um if you could change one thing about yourself Babur, what would it be and why that's a good question you know i feel like obviously i'm very grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that i have at the moment in life and you know, I, I feel like saying I wouldn't change anything, but at the same time, I feel like one weakness of mine maybe that is that sometimes, sometimes I forget to be grateful 
for like the little things in life for for instance i'm wearing i've got clothes on i've got a roof over my head i've got you know i can go downstairs i can drink water if i want i can eat i know where my next meal is going to be so sometimes um, not being grateful for those things uh, but uh, yeah i feel like i would like to be if i could change one thing i would be more grateful for the small things in life very well said. Um, you know, it's actually so true. It's not just you. I think it's with everybody that sometimes we feel that why don't I have what someone else has or why don't I have um, enough uh, of what I have probably imagined in my head, you know. So we yeah. forget to count those small things that are such a huge blessing and uh, we take it for granted. And honestly, this pandemic has actually taught us a lot. Um, things that we really took granted um, pre-pandemic now actually hits my mind sometimes that, for example, the access, the ease of going to mosque and uh, the ease of going outside with a, a, for a family gathering. Um, you know, now we don't have that. And uh, uh, during those times, it, we used to be so lazy, like, oh, I don't want to go out. I just want to stay yeah. in. And now, actually, <laughs> that thing has happened that we have to yeah. stay in because it's uh, not very easy to go out. We have to take all these preventive measures of wearing masks and I don't know what not. Yeah. So life has really, you know, changed so much right now. Yeah. Um, and it makes exactly. us realize that what we had back then we really did not um take it so seriously and you know right now god is really testing us and our patience you know yes definitely so, um, yeah alhamdulillah but uh, we can really learn a lot uh, from all of this uh, alhamdulillah yeah, so um just sure. one last question babar and uh, will yep. be coming to the end of our program so the last question uh, is that um uh, do you can you recall uh, a favorite memory of you from uh, being a teenager? A favorite memory from being a teenager. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like, honestly, like when I think when I look back, there's so many things that I'm grateful that happened. For instance, you know, doing well in academically, and then on the personal scale being mm -hmm. able to recite it's also been a great thing it's been yeah. a huge part of my childhood as well reciting um, so these are all great memories you know doing well academically and reciting and then also i used i, I was quite a sporty person i've i've l laid off a bit from uh, football and cricket recently but i, I intend oh. to get back in i used to uh, participate quite a lot in football and cricket and all of that so that was quite a fun memory from my childhood as well inshallah you you will get back to it it's just a phase right now you know there's always that phase where you have to sort of focus on uh priorities like your academics for instance um and then yeah. you know you can just put the uh sports part aside for some time and then you can get back to it uh, there's always yeah. that thing you know that that phase yeah, yeah. it happens so, inshallah, you will, for sure. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for uh, joining today's program. I honestly really enjoyed with you. And uh, we, I, I love that we shared so many um, valid points on our topic uh, about the usage of media. And uh, we had some good uh, funny points as well there. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you for sharing uh, your personal points as well, your personal viewpoints. It was really nice knowing from your perspective as well. I really thank you. Thank you very much for having me. The pleasure was mine. Thank you for watching Youth Matters today. I hope all of you had a great uh, session. Um, and I hope that all of you learned a lot of valid points from our today's talk. Inshallah, see you next week again with an interesting topic and an amazing uh, guest, inshallah. So um, uh, have a nice day. And Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.